So we are starting our clay unit. And um, first let's kind of talk about what clay is. So I know we've used clay before, but it's important to understand what clay is so that we understand what can go wrong with it and how we need to use it. So clay is just an earthy material that is made from eroded rocks. So when you go to the lake, you find clay. I mean, clay is a natural um, material that we find, but when we use clay in art, somebody has gone and taken the clay, removed all the sand, removed all the rocks, and they have done what's called a wedging to it. So then it goes from this to this, okay? And it's become its purest form. There are several methods to working with clay. Um, there's the pinch method, which is usually what we do when we're younger, like this. There's the slab method where you roll slabs and build them together. There's the coil method where you roll out coils and then there's the wheel. So let's talk about the life cycle of clay. All right, so clay, like I said, comes in a raw form. And then we, in the art room, start out with what is called wedged clay. And that is clay that not only has been taken and all the dirty materials have been removed from it, like rocks, twigs, sand, but all of the air has been taken out of it. And that's extremely important because if air gets trapped inside of clay, like air bubbles, your project will break or burst inside of the kiln because it can't have any air inside of it. All right. So once you have wedge clay, you make something. Okay. Once it's completely made, you want it to dry. Okay. And that's what we call leather hard. So it, it's kind of, it becomes, um, it becomes drier, the color of it changes a little bit darker. And then as it dries out all the way, we call that bone dry. And at that point, um, either two things happen, okay? So when it becomes bone dry, it actually almost turns to a white color. And that's why we it call it white earthenware. Um, and we want it to be bone dry before we put it in the kiln, which is an oven that we use to heat clay and turn it into stone. So bone dry clay breaks really easily. So if it breaks, you have to re-wedge it and start all over. But to be honest, this process takes a really long time. So if it breaks, you're kind of out of luck, all right? So once it goes in the kiln, you have to fire it at almost 2000 degrees in order for it to turn into stone. Then at that point, you have what is called bisque wear. And once again, if that breaks then you have to throw it away, if it doesn't break, you do what's called decorations on it with a glaze. Glaze is a special paint that we use for clay. That also has to go back into the kiln because then it turns into like a glass type form. So you're gonna put it back into the kiln again at about 2000 degrees again, and it's going to be really pretty and shiny and it will also be water resistant, okay? So that's kind of the life cycle of clay. So let's talk about our project. We're gonna create a slab landscape. So if you turn to page two of your sketchbook, we're gonna have to go over these terms and you're gonna have to fill them in. So let's first talk about what the slab method is. So the slab method is a hand building pottery technique that has been around for centuries. It is a technique that includes the rolling out of slabs of clay and then cutting out pieces and attaching them together to create a sculpture. So that is the slab method. So you're gonna write that here, okay? So as you can see, in both of these images, the person is using a rolling pin between two sticks. Now, these aren't just any sticks. These are what we call thickness sticks. And depending upon how thick you want your slab to be, these sticks are gonna be put in place so that when you roll out your slab, it will create a very even piece of clay for you so that you're not getting one side that's really thick and one side that's really thin. So our setup will look almost identical to this when we roll out our slabs tomorrow. So once again, we're gonna use a really big rolling pin. We're gonna roll our clay. It's not gonna be any thicker than a quarter inch because if it's too thick, when you put it into the kiln, um, it has a lot more um, chance of air and different things getting inside of it. So it has a higher chance of exploding the thicker it is in the kiln. So we're gonna keep it pretty thin. Tomorrow, we're gonna be rolling out our slabs. It's gonna be really important that you have a lot of patience tomorrow because with as many people as we have in class, only two or three people are gonna be able to roll out slabs at a time. So we just gotta kind of be patient and be aware that when it's our turn, it's our turn. And when it's not, we're gonna have other things we need to be doing. Once we roll out our slab, we're gonna choose <coughs> a shape for our project and you will cut it out. But we will, 
we will kind of talk more about that in just a second. So what are we gonna do with our slab? Well, we're gonna create a landscape, all right? And we're gonna create what's called a relief sculpture. So this is a relief sculpture. A relief sculpture is something that starts on a flat base and it raises out. So the term relief literally comes from an Italian word that means to raise. So you're raising out pieces of clay or 3D forms from that flat slab surface. Some famous artists that have created relief sculptures. Most of them started coming around during the Renaissance. Um, Michelangelo was a very famous sculptor. Um, this is one of his famous slab reliefs. It's called Madonna of the Stairs and he carved this out of marble. Donatello carved this one. And yes, Michelangelo and Donatello were the inspiration for the Ninja Turtles. So all four Ninja Turtles were named after famous artists. So we're gonna create a landscape, all right? And this is a landscape that has been in the kiln already. So it's already hard. Um, we're gonna create a clay relief landscape. So it's gonna start on a flat surface. You're gonna have to carve out. You're gonna have to add different things. And you also have to include at least five different clay textures on your project. So if we take a look at this example, they created a frame with a the texture. They have a texture on the background. They have a cactus with a the texture. They have a sand texture. And then they have some texture here kind of on the hills. So that's a great example. But what is a landscape? Well, a landscape is a visible feature of an area of land and its landforms. So that means the area of land here and its landforms, the mountains, right? Yes, your landscape can include other things like trees, flowers. If you wanna include a couple animals, that's fine, but the animal should not be the primary thing. It can be like an addition. And we'll look at some examples in just a minute. So here's an example of a project and it's just clay form. So this person has kind of like a rustic hill going on. They have this tree, they have some toadstools, some rocks, then they have this frame. So I just kind of wanted to show you some in some different stages of building. These are some finished ones, but let's take a look at these. So these were my students, all right? So they have their background, they have the beach, the palm trees, the clouds, the, the sun. This person, when I said you can add some extra stuff if you wanted, she added a little live buoy, she added a dolphin. But once again, those are not like the main things that are on her picture, all right? So you can see all the different textures they created here. This one has some great lines going through the sky, the palm leaves, the tree trunks, the sand, all that kind of stuff. Okay, here's a couple more. This person did a desert, desert theme. This person did another ocean theme, but they kind of wanted to show like the underwater part. So they have like all the texture of the coral. Love that. All right, just some different ideas. Here's a couple more. Here's a couple more. 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 And here's a different shape. So this one's circular. Okay. So I'm going to go back and I want to show you a couple things. So if you see on this one, they created a frame, you're more than welcome to, but that's not a requirement. These are probably your best examples as far as what we're doing. So today you're going to go on your sketchbook and you're going to go to page one. It says, sketch it out. And before you get to start clay at all, you have to know what you're doing because I can't just hand you a piece of clay and you have no idea what you're doing because one, clay dries out really fast. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's just gonna sit there and then we're gonna waste and ruin all that clay. And then you're probably not gonna get to do the project. And two, you want to be able to use your time as wisely as possible because we're not gonna spend forever on this project. Clay projects go pretty quickly. So we need to get moving. You need to draw four landscape examples. If you want your landscape to go the other direction, just turn your paper and draw it the other direction. So today you have three tasks. One, you're gonna sketch out your ideas in your sketchbook. Okay, you have to do all four and you have to use color. That way we know when we're ready to glaze, like what are ideas? Two, you need to plan out your background textures. And I'll show you what that means in just a second. And then three, you need to continue working in your new sketchbook. Good? All right, so when I say background textures, let's look at these two. This, that where the arrows are pointing was just their slab. They hadn't built anything on top of it yet. 
so they created some water texture to the bottom. They create they created like some little wavy lines in the sky. This person, they're just slab piece before they built all this other stuff on. They separated it into two. They created like this sand texture and then they created this texture for the sky. So just what textures you're gonna create on your slab. Like what is your background? Is it, let's look at a couple others. Look at this person. So their background would have been the water. So they created all this texture in the water and this and the sky. Look at all that that they created on the sky. Pretty cool. Um, this person, once again, the sky, all the rest of it's built out. Okay, so that's what you need to think about today. What background textures are you gonna use? Cause that is what we will do tomorrow. Tomorrow you will roll out your slab and you're gonna work on your background textures, okay? All right, so also while you're thinking of ideas for your landscape, think about the following things, okay? Because we want it to be interesting. What would be in the background? What would be in the middle ground? And what would be in the foreground? So in this picture, the background would be the sky and the water. The middle ground would probably be like the beach. And then the foreground would be like, and the beach maybe in the dolphin. And then the foreground would be probably like the palm tree. Okay. The foreground is like what is in the, the front the most. All right. Let me look at another one for you. Um, so if I were looking at this one, the background would probably be the sky, the sun, and the palm tree. The middle ground would probably be like the ocean and the water, maybe some of the coral. And the foreground would be probably the animals. So just kind of think like what different layers can I add to my project? What am I going to keep building up to make my landscape more interesting? All right. So tomorrow you have to have these sketches done because you have to show me that you know what you're doing before I give you clay. And if you don't, you're going to spend tomorrow drawing these out. All right. If they are scribbly and I can't tell what they are, you're going to do it again. Do they need to be the most detailed thing you've ever done? Absolutely not. But they need to have enough detail to where I can tell exactly what you're going to be doing. All right. So have this done for tomorrow. Then we'll come in. I will call a few people at a time to roll slabs. The rest of you will work on sketchbooks tomorrow and then we'll just keep swapping out. All right. We will keep going tomorrow and I can't wait to see your ideas.